Hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That is Anna. Welcome to the studio. Tell her pose. Woo! Am I allowed to clap for myself? Yeah, absolutely. Is that weird? <laughs> we have a new album coming in May. I do, yeah. Is lemon the first taste we're getting of it? It is. It's a, a bitter taste. You yeah. get it? Do you understand? Yeah, like a uh, lemon joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. It is. Um, and what, was that was that horrible? No, I loved it. <laughs> just rolled, rolled. Your eyes went to the back of your skull just now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I loved it. No, but why, why was it the right genuine, genuinely? Why was it the right first sonic taste of this album? So, what's cool about Lemon in general um, is, uh, let me see. the The album is sonically not. I don't want to say not cohesive, because I wrote all the songs and they all go together and so I sing on them, whatever. But this is the first thing I've released in a few years that I'm not on a label. And so I kind of had a bunch of freedom to, to do whatever the fuck I wanted. And so I put my favorite s genres from Comeback Kid, Screamo, all the way to Alkaline Trio, to Blink, obviously, 311. I hit all these, like, mellow notes while going Screamo. And so it's so nothing's really cohesive on it, but it's, it's a cool ride. It's like an adventure. The reason why Lemon was the first song... Uh, is because it was the ending credit song on the Teen Wolf movie that just came out. And that movie came out, you know, last month, like a, uh, a little while before the album is supposed to come out. So it only made sense to have that also be the single. We could do a, a, a double release kind of fun thing. What was um, it like, like trying to convince? I, I mean, I'm sure there's not much of a convincing, but like, are you pitching that song for the movie? Is it done for you and then makes it its way to a sync? How does that work? So... Being the lead of a movie, yeah. I'm allowed to be like, look, I'm not going to do this unless this happens. Fuck yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> you no, know, I've, I've got I've got some tenure. I've got a little bit of pull. A little, uh, a little bit, a you little bit. Are not as not as much bro. as you would think. But if oh, we shit. do if we do more, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna hopefully be more on top of things and be in the background and um, have more of a more of a say because you know we've we've all we've earned to have a little bit of fun and. Yeah. And so I put my dad and my brother in the movie and teen, the song um, Lemon was also like another stipulation that I got to have in the movie. And that was a fun one. I pitched them like four or five songs, but Lemon was the only one that I wrote in mind of it being at the end credits of a movie. Um, and at that point, we didn't know what the ending was going to be. So I was just kind of writing like I knew I knew the story. I knew that there was, you know, Teen Wolf. I've been with Teen Wolf for 12 years. So I knew that the ups and downs, the adventure feel, the craziness. And so I, I, I knew kind of the direction that I wanted the song to go in. And I pitched them four songs and they landed on that one. They're like, this is our favorite. And I was like, great, because that's the only one I wrote with. <laughs> and in, credits of mind? And cre credits of mind, yeah. But but are you, when does it real, w w at what point of that process in creating Lemon, do you realize that it could work for the end credits? Or is that like from the outset, you're like, oh, I can see this at the end of a movie. As soon as I started writing it, 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 it we I sat down with Femme. Um, and we were in my little studio in my room and which is kind of, kind of similar to this, less purple. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty purple. It's nice. It's kind of good. I do. It's great. Yeah. I it, do. I do like it. Purple is the color of Kings. Royalty. Yes, baby. That's right, baby. And Lent. And what? Lent. It's like a Jesus thing. Where you give up something. Yes. Right. But like purple, like, right? Like, they get the, like it, it changes or oh, something? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So when we sat down, <laughs> <laughs> when we sat down, we started writing the song in mind of the ending credits. And so uh, from conceptualization, it was always going to be this sound, this sonically sound, it's this sonic, the hedgehog sound. <laughs> what is it like working with Femme? Oh, it's the greatest. I love her. Um... She's my baby girl. <laughs> is it like we, we're mixing business with pleasure? Yes. Yeah, but that's kind of what we want to do. We're we're, we're partners first, whether that's through life, through business ventures, adventures, whatever. We're we're partners first, and then and then lovers. And so, um, yeah, we just we we really try to put our, you know, get we try to do things with each other. Starting small, we the first time we met was writing a song with John Feldman. Is it Shut Up? Uh, no. It was my next single that's coming out soon. Oh. Yeah. It's called Gravity. It's by John Mayer. Yeah. <laughs> heard it. I think I've heard it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and so, so, yeah, that's the first song that we wrote. But then we ended up writing a bunch for 
the last uh, EP that I released with John Feldman under his label. Um, but it's so fun writing with her. You know, I help her with her stuff. She kind of helps me with, with my songs. And and I wanted to include her on this because um, I, I think she's one of the most talented artists, songwriters ever. I love her stuff so much. Um, and if I don't say that, she'll kill me. So that's why. <laughs> well, Just joking. I, I really want to, uh, like... And I, and I ask out of selfish uh, desire for this information. How does that, how do you go about setting this up, right? You are partners first and then lovers after. Is there very clear communication and conversation about like the flow and how we, how we, uh, we just support navigate? each other. No, no, it's just, it's just a natural occurrence. It's perfect. I've, you know, we, I've, I've been dating for 30 years. Actually, not 30. <laughs> but, I was say, how old are well, you? I'm only 31. So, yeah. Well, started, you started dating when you were one? early, dude. Wow. I started early. <laughs> um, uh, but this is by far the most healthy, uh, supportive thing that I've ever been in. And same for her. And um, it's just, it's just kind of, it's just one of those things that goes without saying. You know, we really support each other. She kind of pushes me to do certain things that I'm like, I don't know if I want to do. Here's an example. We were just in New York. Uh, I was on the Drew Barrymore show. Sick. And so sick. I had a huge mustache and she shaved it. Yeah, I that saw. mustache was Iconic. aggressive. That it must was, right? Yeah, that was a that was a big mustache. Thank you. I don't know if that's a compliment. I don't know if it's a compliment either. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you? Uh I have pretty fertile hair gland, yeah. hair hair follicles. So uh not too long. <laughs> but I've I've tried, you know, ever facial hair is fun. Um Ever since I was like 19, I've been trying to grow a mustache, and I go in and out of Look it. You looking at it? Yeah, no, it's massive. It's, <laughs> it's she. It looks alive, to be honest. <laughs> it, it, it crawled around a couple of times. Holy jeez! So we were in New York, um, and I scheduled a day off, and we were supposed to maybe do some press on that day off. And I was like, no, let's just let's just have a day off and have fun. Um, and she heard that, and she was like, don't you dare! You take this press, you do these opportunities. And that's that's just how we are with each other, you know. We're we're um, just so supportive of each other's careers, and there's no jealousy, you know. Where if she has more listeners than I do, or whatever, or me have more fans, or whatever, there's only support and love, and it's really special. It's really, really, really great. Um, and so that's 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 how it is with us. Well, success for one is really, in a way, success for the other, and. But that's not always as easy as, you know, being yeah, in a relationship that. with somebody and, and one of them striving or, you know, being more accomplished than the other. It could get, you know, the jealousy could, could pop up. And, you know, I, you know I, I've, I've been in relationships where that's happened to me before and same with her. And it's just uh, not that way with us. But do you navigate that jealousy a little bit better when you are tackling things as a duo as opposed to a solo act? There has been no jealousy on that end yet. You know, but that's what I mean, because it so, really you, you both have a kind of an ownership in, in, in all of it. Yes. Yeah, definitely. You know, but I'm not in every single one of her songs and yeah. she doesn't write with, with all with all of my stuff. And, you know, she's not in Teen Wolf. And totally. So it's uh, that just doesn't pop up yet. You know, I think it's I think it's just I would love for you get to hang to be a fly on the wall with us. I would love that. It's hard. It, I would love that. No, but mainly like what I like you, but also I want to learn about love because like all I want is a, a, a human being you can work with, a human being you can, you know, you know, fuck the whole thing. That's what you want. Yes, and we uh, we have we we hit it perfectly. We're just I don't know. We're perfect for each other. It's really cool. It's really really Sick. cool. And um, I wish that you guys could could be a fly on the wall and just see it because I'm not that great at articulating why it's so good. I think probably there's not enough words in the English language. That, oh, it's that beautiful. It really is. It's perfect. It's so good, and uh, it gets better every single day. Like I, I always heard that was cliche and bullshit, and I was like, that's that's bullshit. Like I've been in relationships, and it gets worse every day. <laughs> um, but this genuinely is more fun every single time we hang, and it's. Uh, and and more ambitious and we're you know we the more love that we have the more love we 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 have for ourselves and the growth of ourselves and and collectively and it's it's really wild it's beautiful it's fucking amazing yeah i'm really happy damn yeah. damn it's out there keep looking zach it's totally out there dude i thought it wasn't for for a long time wow thank you for the hope <laughs> knock Absolutely, on wood yeah oh you, this this is real wood over here yeah it is she's yeah. she's a thick log <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she, she is. Yeah, she could. She could be sanded on the bottom a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody sees the bottom. Nobody sees the bottom. That's no, why. No, no. Yeah. We we very much here. Like uh, whatever you see is what we give a shit about. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's under the hood? Oh, dude, it's look. actually fucking gross. I get that. Smart. It's you're doing business. this album independently. Yes. You mentioned that you're going. You, you, 
not having a label involved right. changes the way you create, correct? It does. Yeah, I had a lot of freedom over at Big Noise. Um, but it, the, there still is just, you can't, you can't compare it to just being you. you. Know, yeah. So, like, what do you do first? You what know, this album is going to be just you and there's nobody holding, like, nobody else is above you. Nobody else is approving anything. Right. Creatively, what's the first step you take? I just write whatever the hell I wanted to, you know. Um, whether that was like we were in Hawaii and we, we I, I brought my producer with me and, yeah. and he brought all of his equipment and we wrote some stuff that sounded like 311, even, even more reggae than them, you know, and it's just really mellow. Um, I just, we just, we just, I just write shit, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, that was the first step. <laughs> what is the state it's of okay. pop punk today? Is it like alternative music? Is it getting more popular? Pop punk? Uh, yeah. I think, how would you I, categorize what your this lemon and what's coming? I don't know. I don't know how to categorize lemon. Um, I so it is alternative, right? And and le lemon yeah. sounds nothing like the drugs album or no, the drugs. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Completely different. And there are some songs that I that I did have with Feldy. Um, so the, there might be some stuff that still sounds kind of in sonically in in the drugs EP. Um. But, uh, yeah, this, uh, this one's kind of just all over the place. And that's, that's, that's what I always wanted to do. I've, I have so many, I think I have a different position because, you know, first and foremost is, is acting career. That's, that's the breadwinner. That's where I put all my, my, not all my focus on cause I love music, but it's, that's, that's, that's where I feel like I can't have the freedom that I have with music because I, where other artists, they don't want to upset their fans by, you know, changing genres or doing some kind of outrageous shit because there's more riding. The, the stakes are higher oh. for them, you know? And so for me, I guess I, I can do whatever the hell I want, I feel like, and just have fun and write songs that I think are still awesome and sound really great. I'm not going to write a shitty song that I think is shitty, of course. Um, but you have, like, genre freedom. Like You, you don't need yeah, to box yourself in the shit. Exactly. And so that's 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 that was the culmination of this album and... There was not too much thought put into it. I, I wasn't like, this is what I want to do. I want to go this direction. Um, it all just kind of happened supernaturally. Um, and, uh, yeah. So why do we wait until May to put it out? If it's ready today, why not feed us? I think we wanted to do a rollout with some singles first, like Sorry. a single a month. Um, yeah, I still have a team behind me, you know, my manager. and um, But they report to you, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Of course. You know, they fucking work for me, dude. <laughs> um, but you know, they, I still, they have input and yeah. I, and I hear them out and, and I don't know. The single thing is fun. I, there's, there's, I, I want to, I think what's interesting about an album is that one, it's a rite of passage. Like, you know, I've done EPs, but I want to put out an album. This has 16 songs. It feels like a great discography of just my, you know, who I am. And I, it's just fun. I love albums. I, you know, going to CD stores as a kid and getting the booklet and, you know, back when all that was, was the, fun. The lyrics are in the, the yeah, lyric. The I, so I, I got the to design artwork. all that. I love that. I just love that process. But also another thing with albums is that you, some songs get lost in the mix. You know, um, that's just how it is. Like if I have a favorite song, maybe some people won't think it's their favorite. And so I think singles sort of, you know, embellish certain songs and put them in the in the, f mm. the forefront and um so i think that's what's cool about singles but the whole album to me i think I, I would love to release as a single um so i think in order to make that happen i'll just once the album comes out i'll do music videos for each song just so i can get the love that it deserves and that's the attention sick. and we'll see i don't know it's, a, it's it's ambitious are you making music for you Oh, hell yeah. I love it. The only thing I listen to, honestly, nowadays is meditation music. Like, I'll put on just, like, random meditation music and, some, and try not to fall asleep while I'm driving. Uh, <laughs> what a game. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> it's like, did you ever see uh, Four Year Old Virgin? Where the game on that is to take a couple of like Tylenol yes. PMs and try to jerk off before you fall asleep. <laughs> yes. you, you always win. <laughs> no. It reminds me of that. Um, you ever try that game? I've never tried that game, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my and my own music, because I, you know, I've been I've been uh, making sure the album is perfect and and listening to the songs over and over again. But I really love them, you know, and and uh, I I do I make music for for myself. I think it's I think it's uh, I think all the songs are fucking really fun and cool and catchy and different and 
Um, yeah, yeah. But the, you know, there wasn't too much thought put into this album. I think, and I think that's the way I wanted it. You know, I think instincts as an artist, initial first instincts are always going to be artistic and and celebrate, and you can celebrate them. And um, you know, I didn't need to come up with um, what is it when what did when, when Green Day did American Idiot? What is that called? The, their opus? Is that what it is? Well, like their their pride and joy, their like their their core body of work. No, there it's like uh, 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 lost it. I don't know. We're gonna figure this out. <laughs> no, it's 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 an album that's that that has like oh, a storyline. Oh, oh I know what you're talking about. Um, it yeah, it is a uh, fuck. What is it called? Concept album. Concept yes. album. Yes. So this isn't this isn't a concept album. I I uh, I think it is. Meant to be heard in order from one to sixteen. Okay. Um, just because of the ride that it takes you on, it starts with heavy screamo, yes, like comeback kid, um, and then it goes down the ladder a little bit, and then it and then it kind of switches gears for one song called "Shit Parade." <laughs> <laughs> there's another song. Oh, dude, there's uh, there's there's some good shit on this album. That's like just like it's really fucking fun. Like there's a song, the the second to last song is called "Sing," and it's about. Uh, so my mom died. Of, I think we've talked about this before, uh, about eight years ago. And so this song is dedicated to her, and it's like pff, heavy, beautiful. It's like an orchestra. It's such a great song. And then there's another song about uh, the hook goes, "I'm just a piece of shit walking around with my hand on my dick." And so it's <laughs> it's all over the place. Well, and song, that's, and that's what I love. A song like "Sing." When did you write that? So me and my producer, we like to take little trips and make them really special and we uh we went to hawaii we also went to big bear we stayed right on the lake and i had a bunch of songs already written and when we were in big bear we were like lighting fires it was last year around uh we were lighting fires in the fireplace not like just on the, the lake <laughs> <laughs> um it was n close to Christmas. So we were watching like christmas movies and i was waking up every morning making breakfast for us and it was just a great trip we had so much fun um and while we were on that trip, I was, like, inspired. I was like, I want to write an acoustic song. Um, just because I hadn't had that on the album yet. All the songs that we were going to record there were, you know, like, pop punk, punk, whatever. And, uh, and I was like, I feel like writing an acoustic song. And started writing a song. And then the first two lyrics that hit me out of nowhere, uh, I was like, this sounds like it's a song about my mom. And I just kind of went with that, you know. It was, I, I didn't sit. That's usually how most of all of this happened. I was, I, I never had like a game plan in mind. It just, I trusted myself as an artist for it, you know? And, and, uh, I felt like that was a c c interesting way to kind of do this one. And it present like each song presented itself. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. I mean, some of the songs on it, I wrote years ago. Um, some of them I wrote on the day. Um, so it's just kind of all over the place, but it was just my into my artist intuition was just telling me where to go with this album And I thought that was an interesting way to do it. You know the songs you brought back. Why did you bring them back? so I left Feldy's label um, And we have so many songs that are just sitting there and I oh. felt bad for them I love them. I love them all and we just never really had any room for them on uh, on the stuff that we already released and I wanted to to use them and so I, I, I asked, I was like, is it possible that we could, you know, put these out? And he's like, of course. He's a good friend of mine. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're, that's, that's why I brought them back. I want, I just, I, they were just sitting there, you know. Were they relevant or vital to the story that you're telling today? That's the thing. I'm not really telling a story. Yeah. But you still should listen to the album top to bottom. So Absolutely. Yeah. There's no, there's no story in it. I just think sonically it needs to go in order just because it starts crazy heavy and just kind of has this slow progression of heaviness but beautifulness is there uh, a reason you set it up like that start heavy and and softer um once i realized all the songs that i had i kind of was like okay what is the order here you know because that's always fun writing an album you kind of get to decide what goes first and last and all that and it's 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 another artistic element that you get to put into uh writing an album and so I was just trying to figure it out, and it kind of hit me, and I was like, oh, these songs kind of digress in heaviness and then kind of get more beautiful and artistic and whatever, and um, that's kind of what dictated it. You know, I, just, I was just sitting there for not long. Everything about this album just kind of hit me. It was, it was nothing, nothing with too, had too much thought put into it, um, but it's still, you know, it's still a good, art, like, work of, 
a piece of work. <laughs> it's, it's a body of work. That it's, a good, it's a good body of work. Thank you. It's made up of a bunch of pieces of art. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't want I don't want people to think that it's like it just happened. Like I I didn't put any thought into any of this. Like oh. all the songs are you know beautiful and um yeah I just I yeah I just it just kind of happened that way. You can like create freely but still be like strategic in a sense that like you want the best you want the audience to have the best experience consuming it you know yeah totally and that that is in the form of like setting up an album right and picking the order of those songs because it definitely fucking matters it does for this one i think i mean obviously you can listen to however you want i think it's going to have this a similar effect but what do you want people to walk away with or learn about you from listening to this album hmm Just learn about me i don't know um I don't know. Whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. It's up to you. You know, I, I, I think I tend to be kind of, you know, transparent with whatever I do, whether it's being interviewed by you or um, only being interviewed by you. Or, yeah, it's exclusively. <laughs> exclusively. Yeah. And, uh, or music that I put out, I try to, you know, add little elements of what I was going through. Obviously, you, you write what you know. And I don't know. I don't think I want, I, I want people to, to walk away thinking about themselves. Like, I don't think I want them to know learn anything about me it's that's I, the right answer yeah it's I, I i don't i don't really i don't care i never really thought about that I, it's, it's not a piece to like show who i am obviously it, it does you know it's it's what i love it's what i love writing about it's not it's, the purpose behind consuming it no 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 definitely not it's for it's for the people and i love the songs too you know but it's it's i'm not like you need to learn a this 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 tells my deepest darkest secrets. You know, it's uh, it's nothing like that. Um, yeah, it's just a fun fucking album. May twenty sixth, it comes out. I'm That's right, it. baby. It's called Unravel. I was just gonna ask, what's the name? Because uh, uh, I didn't see it anywhere. Really? Yeah. Well, That's there's a funny. date in your bio. Did you come through in the email? We did get an email that said un Unravel. Oh fuck. Zach's not very good at looking at those things. Dude, what? The I f did my own version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's called Unravel, and the reason why is it all just hit me like i wrote a song it's called unravel um it's a, it's the last song it's the ending song it's to me the most epic thing that i've ever written and it's beautiful and i love it so much and the structure of it is kind of bizarre like it just repeats like a verse kind of over and over again and there's no real hook the, the hook oh. is the verse it's it's interesting it's really cool i wish i could show you guys um and so that song was called unravel and it was such an impactful emotional epic song that when i finished it i was like this would be cool to call the album unravel and i loved that i love when artists sort of have like a title track song mm -hmm. um that's the same title as their as their album is there something that that song embodies or is a part of that sure, story yeah. that just is, is all encompassing um it's not so encompassing of the album like it's not like okay this here's a, here's a story that we're telling and this is definitely the climax of the story i think sonically it is mm -hmm. but the lyrically it's it's just uh you know i've i've been pretty open here and um you know i I've, I've dealt with uh sobriety and and that's that's that was hard you know i'm almost 2 years in now and so it's definitely easier now congratulations thanks man yeah it's a huge fucking deal man it's awesome I love it. I stopped smoking cigarettes too. Oh, nice. I stopped masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't jerked off in 365 days. Uh, yeah, it's great, dude. Uh, yeah, there's no cravings at this point. I'm super stoked about this journey and it's, it feels really good. Um, but there's moments, there were moments where I would get depressed and it was still sort of a new thing to experience as a sober person because normally, you know, you just turn to whatever substance is in front of you um, to numb yourself and this time I don't have that. And so when this, this song came up of that, um, feeling depressed, feeling down and, and not having much around other than being in your head and realizing that like, fuck, I'm still kind of a mess, you know? Um, and that there's still work to be done. So that's, that's kind of what the song is about. But, uh, you know, there's no story that, that it wraps up. Does writing that song help you learn how to get out of your own head and not rely on what you used to rely on? Mm. Or is music a way to get out of your own head? Like what? I mean, yeah. So like, I was, I was, I was down when I wrote the song. Um, so I don't know if it's, I, 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 you know, people say that writing music is therapeutic all the time because you get to air out your laundry or whatever. And, um, you know, I think it is super therapeutic in the moment. You know, I'm I, I, like, 
but I think it's still something that I was always going to get past. You know, I don't, I, th- mm. I don't think writing the song helped me help speed it along or anything like that. Um, but it's just, I think what's cool about it is that, you know, when you're, you use that sort of outlet to write some heavy shit and it's, you know, I wouldn't have been able to, exp- to write that song if I didn't go through that. And I love that song. Um, but I don't think the song helped me, you know, get out of get out of my own head. I think. It was, what do you do though when you are like when you are left with because that is scary, right? Like being left with your own thoughts and then not having a vice to go to. And at the end of the day, you have to. It's a stormy weather, right? Because that's yeah, it's yeah. part of the process. Usually, music. Yeah, I write. I write music, um, and I don't know if it if it if it helps me do any like feel any better. But a distraction, nonetheless. Yeah, it's a good distraction, definitely. Um, yeah, and at this point, yeah, there's 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 nothing I there's nothing I can do. But that's dope. Like I love, I hate it, but I love feeling, feeling, you know, feeling the shit, and that's that's uh, powerful. And that's something that, that's why I stopped smoking cigarettes too, because I was like, I don't even want to lean on this shit. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to. If I'm feeling a little anxious, like deal with it. That's that's what I was saying deal to myself. It. That's so scary. It but is, it's, dude. It's, it's, dude, it's a mature, right, strong way to be. It felt right. I, I usually operate on instincts. Um, so with everything that I do. And so, uh, that was just, it was screaming at me to, you know, even knock that out and just kind of feel everything. Was it hard to quit cigarettes? No, it was actually kind of a cool story. So I, I, so Femme was on tour <clears throat> and I wanted to go visit her and I wanted to, I, I have two dogs and so I didn't want to leave them with somebody for an extended amount of time. So I rented a little RV for Cruise America. I don't know if you've seen the Cruise America yeah. RVs driving around. <laughs> Tiny little RV, and I packed it with me and my dogs and some like peanut butter and well, peanut butter and jelly and bread. Not not <laughs> not just peanut butter. Not just peanut butter uh-huh. because uh, that'd do- be weird. That's weird because dogs lick peanut butter yeah. peanut butter off of yes. genitalia. Yes, yes. So I didn't. That's not what happened because I also brought a cup of noodles and top ramen and whatever. Oh wow, you were classy <laughs> stock, dude. You're you're stock luxury. What else do you need? That's it. That's it. That's all you. That's all you need. That's literally. Um and. I was going back and forth, like thinking of quitting cigarettes, and I was smoking Lucky Strikes, like Reds. Mm. Those were, and I was sucking them down like really quickly. I so was, gross. It was they were nuts? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like the cheap, no offense, like kind of cheap cigarettes. Are they right? cheap? I just, want, I just, I thought they were like the most powerful. I, got, so you tried other brands before you got to. The I Lucky. was always an American Spirit, Yellow. Oh. You know, but like I thought Lucky Strikes were supposed to be the like heaviest. <laughs> I don't, That's what I wanted. I don't know, and so. I have my dogs. My little dog likes to sit on my lap <clears throat> and stick his head out the window, and I'm afraid that he's going to fly out of the car. Because he's, he, yeah. he, he's I, I feel like if I let him go, he'll jump out. Good it's, thing to be afraid of. It's really scary. Um, and so I was like thinking, I was like, I can't smoke cigarettes blasting through the middle of Texas all by myself with my dog jumping on my lap, sometimes driving at night. It just felt dangerous. So I was like, I'm just not going to smoke on this trip. Whoa. And... I got, I got to, I got, I met them at Texas, um, Femme and her band, and um, I was like, I, I, it took like three or four days to get there by myself, so I was already three or four days off, and then I was like, I'm just gonna keep riding with this, and then, and then I, I, That's I and then I stopped, but now, like, if, thank you, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, you, you supply Perrier in the, in the green room, you, it's you, just, just, you expect me not to burp my ass off? My idea is just to get burping ASMR, we and know what we're doing. He also spent a lot of time in the green room. I'm sorry, I was really <laughs> okay. late today. Okay. No, Dan wants to bring it up because like, you know who's actually more upset than you is Dan. I hate I'm it. not upset at all. <laughs> I know, that's what's crazy, because you're kind, and Dan's, you know, uh, Dan. It's okay, yeah, he's, he's flustered for sure. I was definitely flustered, I was like pacing earlier. Yeah. Were you? Yes. I don't like lateness me. or tardiness. It messes with my head. It's, I get it. I don't like it either. Yeah. That's why I was I was that's you why were, I was here early. Yeah, you were literally here. <laughs> I'm sitting for like an hour and I I've never been this late. <laughs> but now if I have like a bit of a craving of a cigarette or somebody around me is smoking a cigarette and I take a hit of it, I feel sick and anxious. So I can't even come really? back to it if I if I want to, which is great. So all because you just wanted to keep your dog in your R V. Exactly. That's amazing. Yeah, it's cool, right? Were you surprised that it was it easy? Did you get cravings? Um, I think when the anxiety would hit, I'd be like, uh-huh. God damn, I want to have a cigarette right now. But I was just like, I don't, I'm not going to push through. And then when, and then when I got over that, if I did have a hit of a cigarette, like I said, I would get like, I would feel ill, damn. get dizzy and I don't know. So 
sing? Did you, you mentioned that that song has an orchestra on it? There's strings and crazy orchestra instruments, and they were you know, they were not live, unfortunately. It's okay. What is it like arranging something like that? Because it starts acoustic, right? You said it does. Yeah, and well, first it starts. One thing that's cool about what we did is recording in Hawaii and uh, Big Bear. We use the elements of the, of nature. Oh, that's and beautiful. So the song starts with you hear the lake and our fire roaring, it's popping. Um, and so I lo- I thought that was really Sick. really cool. And then another song from Hawaii, you hear the ocean in Hawaii, uh, start the song. So I thought that was a, that was really cool. Um, so yeah, it starts acoustic. Um, my producer Matt Malpass is one of my best friends now, and he's an incredible producer, arranger, um, all around great person, just a great guy. Uh, and yeah, he just he killed it. Did yeah. it take a while to find that that right partner? Um, not really. I didn't have to, I didn't I didn't like have any too many too many trials of you know I was working with Feldy and he and I became really good friends. Um, and then I met Matt. So it's, I did, it, it, it just did, worked. It just worked. He's Is a that, good, he's a good buddy. He's sober too. And, um, you know, so there's none of that added pressure. We can relate on that kind of thing. And, and, uh, it was just fucking funny with each other. We have really funny, like, he, so there's a joke, <laughs> you know, those jokes that just tickle you every time you think about it. Yes. Um, he said, well, I think while we were in Big Bear, he said, uh, dude, I started farting, and once I started, I couldn't stop starting. <laughs> and just the phrasing of that made no sense, and it cracked me the fuck up. And so that's our humor. Fart jokes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So it's we have a good rapport. Do you set like a, like a quota of songs you need to finish before you go to Hawaii or Big Bear, or do you just let it go? So Wait, I, had no, I had no idea. I, had no, I didn't know if I wanted to put out an EP. I don't know if I wanted to put out an album, a double album, a oh, double shit. EP. We were just rolling with it. And... Most of the songs that we recorded were, were great. There's probably like maybe three or four that aren't on this album that, that we recorded. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that's, I think that's kind of the vibe. You usually you do as much as you can and then kind of pick and choose. And I had 16 that I was like, these are, these are all solid. I want them to represent me. How many songs did you have before you got to the 16? Maybe 20. That's not bad. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Was that hard to pick the right ones or easy? No, they, they just showed themselves. Yeah, they showed themselves. When, there were a couple songs that I was really excited to record, and then once we recorded them, they weren't hitting, and I was like, "Yeah, I guess this isn't oh. this isn't just working." So pretty much everything else I used. Um, yeah, everything uh, everything that felt really great, I I just used. You know, whether. It, it was a part of a story or not. Or It's really cool. It's fun. It's, it's just a loose album, but it's really good. It's really well done. It's really fucking good. By the way, you can listen to Tyler Posey's entire discography right now on Amazon Music. We're going to put a link in the description below. I love that you put the elements in there in nature. Like yeah. that texture, it just sets the tone. It makes you feel like you're there. It's cool. It's, it's, really, really, s- it's really cool, man. Did the recording of this album overlap with filming Teen Wolf? It did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, the last song that we finished... We finished after Teen Wolf ended. Okay. Um, and he was even, so he's from Georgia and we filmed in Atlanta and he was even going to come down and, uh, and record some stuff, but it ended up not working. Um, so yeah, so yeah, we were, we started the album over a year ago, I think November of 21, 22. Yeah. I feel like 21. November of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we had, I, I, I didn't even know I was filming Teen Wolf when we first started uh, the album. I didn't know that Teen Wolf was going to come back. And so yeah, it was. It's it's, there's, it's a full. It's a huge fucking took, for, took forever. Yeah, it was great. It's so fun. Twenty twenty one, you started this album. Yeah, November. Holy November. shit! Yeah. I think we had you in in October of twenty twenty one. I think the last time. So we you had came you. in here and then started the album. You guys inspired me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. When you, when we came in, we were also talking about Teen Wolf, and you said you have no idea if anything's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. But did you actually not know then if? Oh, maybe I did. I'm sorry, it's, <laughs> it, I think it was like a month later it was announced, so you must have... No. I, may, I may have... I'm, I may have known... Was I on tour? Did I come back from tour recent from that? I did. I think I maybe. just got back from tour. Oh, no, it was September we had you in. Mm. It's, you were talking about past life. I don't know. So maybe I didn't know. I don't think I knew. Really? I don't think I knew that Team Wolf was coming back. When yeah. that got announced, I was like, fuck, he knew the entire time. And I may have. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I remember knowing, but I could be wrong. How many like movies could come? Are you just oh, signed dude, for I'm, one? 
I yeah, I just signed for for one, um, and then you know that's that's kind of what you do. You you sign for one, and then you renegotiate your deal, and you know try to make it better and better and better each time. Um, but I want more. I really want more. And uh, I think Paramount Plus's strategy was to see. Let's see how well the first one does, and then we'll go from there. But it like broke records yes, for Paramount Plus. So I don't see why they wouldn't want to do more. And, and yeah, I would love. I would love to. And I want to be more of a part of it, like behind the scenes, whether it's writing. You or- deserve that, though. Like, I have a lot of friends who have given dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of episodes into shows right. who eventually become directors on them. Yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. they produce their, uh, an episode. I mean, my friend has, like, 100 episodes into her, the last show she did. She was directing, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, out of, like, a 26-episode season, she could have directed four or five episodes, you know? Yeah, I directed an episode of Teen Wolf before we, we finished. Um, we talked about that. Yeah, I think so. Because it is creatively challenging, but also, like, a lot of fun. And oh, dude, it's the greatest. Nobody knows the fucking show better than you. That's what I'm thinking, you know? Oh. And and, and <laughs> our our writer, Jeff, who's who the creator of Teen Wolf, he's got his hands, like, on a bunch of different projects, and I want to tackle it with him. Like, I, I want to relieve some of the pressure and be like, yo, I've got all these ideas. I wrote a script here. here let's Let's do this together, you know? So that's the plan. I, I, I care a lot about it, and I think I know what the what the fans want, and yeah. Oh yeah. my god! And your knowledge is shaped by that show, so like, yeah, totally. You know, you learn the most from being in it. Exactly. Also, being in my favorite movie of all time. Wait, hold on! No, don't tell me. Oh my god! It's Come like on. the is first it, movie that changed your life. Fuck yeah! yeah, yeah right, right, right. God, it's the greatest movie to ever exist. <laughs> do you know? Do you, like, come on. It's great. It really is great. It is. You were so good in it. Thanks, man. I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I want to do a part two. Yeah, I've I've already got an idea. I started writing it a little bit, so I'm trying. I'm just I'm just going to I'm going to pitch it, and it's going to be incredible. I will literally. You have if I, I will <laughs> vomit and understand. I may like uh, literally have an aneurysm, pass out. I don't know. Like you could bring that to Jayla. She has a production company. I've seen yeah. some of the movies she's been doing recently. This this is way better. You know, this is a good one. I would love that. I would love it. I would love it so much. And she just posted about Made in Manhattan not too long ago, and she, she tagged me in it. I didn't know, and then I just, and then I clicked on her thing, and she was following me, and I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" I mean, does she's your? She's I haven't your talked mom. to her in like twenty years. How old were you when you filmed that? A oh, baby, ten, ten, twenty-one years ago. Wow, yeah. damn. Does your idea pick up today? Like when now is a 31, yeah. 33 year old man? It's twenty years later. It's sick. That's awesome. It's a great idea. I want. I just got to do it. God, I can see that Met sequence in my head when they get her ready for uh-huh, that uh-huh, fucking uh-huh, party. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, emotions. My. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. When you film something like that so long ago, do you still like have memories from it or do you just kind of not even remember that part of your life? No, I definitely do. Um, I don't know if it's because I've, it's such a prominent part of my life and I talked about it over and over again, but yeah, I, um, I have, I have a shitload of memories from it. I, I, so Rufus, remember the dog? Yeah, of course. Uh, he was Elaine Goldsmith's dog. Who's who's? I know that name. She's the her uh, the producing partner of Jennifer. Um, and there was one time we were walking through Central Park, and I was walking the dog. They're like Tyler, walk the dog, and I was like, all right. And I had the leash like wrapped around my hand, and they gave me something to throw at him, to throw for him, and I was like, great. And I tossed it, and then didn't let go of the leash. And he's a huge dog, and he was way bigger than I was. <laughs> And he yanked the fuck out of me. And I, f- I feel like I was diagonal or horizontal <laughs> in the air um, for a long time. And I landed and I like, remember I, I looked up at everybody and then put my head down and immediately started crying. It hurt. And I had like, a, I had my hand was all cut up or whatever. Was, I was fine. But uh, so that was a rem- memory. I had a, a crush on the casting director's daughter uh, in that movie. The first AD made me cry. Ray Fiennes made me cry. Why did he make you cry? <laughs> I think you first ADs kind of have to be a little bit of you know aggressive and you know there's there's you're, a lot of pressure being a first AD. You know? I mean you're also ten, and I was ten years old. You know, but yeah. also yeah, why is he? Did he yell at you? He didn't yell at me. No, no, no. He was just he's an aggressive person. He's from he's from New York. You know? <laughs> I think he was at least. I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, but he was a great guy. Um, Isn't it funny the memories you actually keep with you? Like yeah, how yeah. scattered and random they actually it's super are. Super random. But I remember most of that movie, definitely. Especially, you know, it's, it airs all the time. So I try, I try to check it every time, every time it's on, and everything floods back, and it's really cool. It was really hot when we were filming. I remember being really warm. That shit's all over TBS, all over yeah. TNT. It's a great movie. It just doesn't die, and I want to keep it going. So I have an idea. I'm trying to write it. I've been, I've been really getting into writing lately. So I'm just trying to. I've got a lot of projects that I'm trying to make. What? So what? Side of your brain does that unleash, and what is it like to write a script? 
I think it's just a side that I've always, as an actor, ever since I was a kid too, I always asked questions and I always felt like I wanted to have more of a say. And why can't the camera go here instead of there? Or why are we lighting this? And, um, or like, why is this story going this way? Like, I feel like my character or this character shouldn't be saying this. I feel like the story could expand more going this way. And so I've always just thought more than just acting. I've always kind of just had this sort of unscratched itch that I wanted to, you know, like the one that gets way up in, deep in your, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like that, you know? Um, and so <laughs> is it a want for full control? Like, because you've been the uh, pawn in somebody else, uh, so many other scripts. I think maybe a little bit. I mean, I love acting on other people's movies, you know, and whatever. Um, but I, I feel like I have a voice, an artistic voice that I, like, it's not so much I want control. It's, I want to express this, mm -hmm. this, this muscle that, you know, I want, I, I feel like is, uh, is a good storyteller. And I also think that filmmaking is more of a creative process an artistic process than just acting. Like I, whenever I film stuff with my friends, I'm always, I'm editing, I'm doing the camera work. I'm hardly in anything. You're part I, of every, you're part of all of it. I love it. And I love editing. I love, I, I edit all my music videos and I feel like that's where the real artistic side comes um, cause you could change the, the tone for anything just in editing, which I think is so fascinating. And, um, that is weird. I never think about that, but you really could, like you could do, you could do a whole fucking scene and change the way it yeah. feels and yeah. looks and flows just in post. It could be a comedy or a uh, horror just from editing. That's crazy. And so that is to me where I just, I think is, I, I love, I love that. I love that element so much. And, and, um, yeah, I love, I love, uh, Acting has always been fun, but it's always been a stepping stone to the next thing. Like, I love acting, but I f have more passion when it comes to writing, directing, editing, filmmaking. What type of fulfillment do you get from making music? And is it connected to anything you'd get from making a film or writing a script? Hmm. I think it's still... I just love being creative, whether it's fucking making food or writing a script or making an album. Um, I love expressing... And just music changed my life at such an early age. Um, so I feel like I, I want to give back to it. And it's something that I've I've always been passionate about. And I just want to honor that. You know, from when I was a little kid, it changed my life. And I want to honor that sort of um, moment from myself as a little kid, you know. And, and I, st I, do, I do love it. I do view music as a little bit differently nowadays. You know, I don't need to put all my eggs in one basket for it. Um, I think right when I first got going, I was like, this is all that matters. Um, but I, I, for me, I just want it to be another element of what I do rather than kind of, you know, make it my entire life. I get that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love writing music more than I love performing it. I love being on stage and I love, uh, when everyone sings this lyrics to me and I love fucking with the fans and, um, but I love, I think I love just writing music and creating and hearing how, where the song could go differently and, and being like, you know what, I don't like this element, let's add this, or let's try this harmony instead, and I just love fucking creating. But, and in doing that, you give to somebody else what music gave to you, right? Like, it's a full circle moment. Sure, hopefully. Huh. You hope so, you know? Um, definitely. I would love that. And I have, and I have. You know, I hear a lot of great stories about, you know, how I've, I've saw some, someone on the street like a year ago and they were like your album drugs there's one song specifically i'm sober and i'm going through sobriety too and, and it, you know i i felt that and so that was that was really great you know but see that's different than somebody coming up to you and going like i watch you in teen wolf or i loved you in sure Manhattan. it definitely like it, it's yours yes and that and that and that is significant that feeling is very different than oh, i loved you in teen wolf to i love the songs that you wrote that is and that's I'm not saying teen very wolf, cool teen wolf is yours but it's only partially yours of like course. you share that with so many other people whereas Absolutely. the music is like Yes, and, and, and that Rip is a different me. feeling, definitely. And that's 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 fun. That's that feels really good. That feels it's different than just being recognized on the street for Teen Wolf. When people will say like, "I love your songs," I, this song really affected me. That's there's something really special to that, you know. And it's fun. It's nice. It's nice to share that with somebody. When do you think people? When do people start noticing and recognizing you for the music and not just being Scott? I think once I started really taking it seriously, whenever I got with Feldy and 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 Big Noise and. Um, but you know the diehards have always been there, and they and they they've they've I I've been doing music f since I was twelve, you know, and putting out stuff and MySpace and whatever, and so those those diehards have always been there, and so some of them, a small niche few, have always 
said, thank you for the music. I love the music. I love hearing you grow um, as a musician and, and artist. And so, um, but definitely the for the masses, I guess. And it's still, it's still not known so much that I'm a musician also. Um, but it's definitely started probably around like three years ago. I think this mess definitely changed some things. That's when I first heard your music. Oh, really? And I think this mess is still a fucking great song. Yeah, that's a fun one, dude. Yeah. I love that song. The screams towards the end of that one. Woof. Yeah. Still gets me every time. Sick. Okay, yeah. so you're a scream head. I'm a, I'm a screamer, yeah. All right, good. I'm a you're going to love the first few songs. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. What do you like about screaming on a record? I think it's uh, what people wouldn't expect from mm -hmm. me. You know. So is that why you do it? Uh, well, I do love that music. I really do. I love it. Pumps me up, and um, I think it's a it's a it's a cool element of hardcore punk that's sort of um, is has been around for a long time, and I want to pay homage to all the things that I love, you know. Um, but to me, it's it's I really want to separate myself from um, artists who I feel like are are hopping on a trend. Mm because it's it's the trendy thing to do but for me I, I i don't think screaming is a trend you know um or at least you know the, you, you don't no, see it's a fucking lifestyle bro that's right baby <laughs> that Where, shit's been around a long time it's a long time you wear camo and yeah, i remember going to bamboozle bamboozle after dark where those screamo motherfuckers yeah dude it, the sun would go down it, it was, the headliners are over and the people who were like all the way on the outskirts would be these fucking crazy screamo bands yeah. and they'd be moshing that super heavy and mm -hmm. I love it. I, lo I, lo I love. I love getting into fucking s circle pits where they're swinging at your fucking face and terrifying. It's terrifying. I, I, how do you maintain love singing it. live though? Because I saw uh, Bring Me the Horizon the other week, yeah. a couple months ago, and I was like, "How the fuck is he doing this every single night? He's screaming at the top of his lungs." Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I would imagine. Thankfully, so. I don't, it's not every single song for me um, because I I don't have a technique when I do it. I just do it in a in a I think a really poor way. I, it sounds dope, but it, it's not it's not to save my voice. I know a lot of those singers have issues, mm -hmm. which I'm sure I'll have if I scream nightly. Well, because the technique is more to preserve, right? Not exactly. for like tone, <clears throat> right? And I don't I don't have that technique. I don't I, I don't preserve. <laughs> I um, just fucking waste. I just, I just yeah I do. I go I I uh, it hurts. It hurts my brain. My fuck. I feel like I'm bleeding. You get lightheaded. Jeez, you get dizzy. Right. You get a little lightheaded a little bit, but it's you know it's it's fun. You feel like you earn it. You know. Fuck. That's it's, terrifying. It's cool. So that's that's why I, I like to do it. I like to pay homage to everything that I love and and uh, and I, I I love screamo. Sometimes it just works. It, I need it for the song. I'm like this this shit needs some fucking hardcore. The, like, does it present itself that way afterwards? Or do you know going into it? I'm gonna scream here. Yeah, during it. Like I like you. I don't usually write a song thinking like this is what i want to write next i never i never really have that except for lemon lemon was the only thing we're like okay we want this to feel like this i usually just pick up a guitar and just start and start writing um like this mess like uh that i had no idea i was going to do those screams and i wrote this sick breakdown for the bridge and i was like this needs some fucking screams mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm gonna try it. i'm gonna go for it and at that point i've screamed a little bit before but most of my discography even from is it discography or discography I don't. To be honest, I don't fucking know. Because I've been saying discog, and I heard you earlier say disog, and I. Well, I, that's probably my poor diction. Could could be. Yeah, I'd blame me. Unless you want to. It's uh discography. Discography. There's, right. Yeah, it's C O G discography. Sorry, right, sorry. right. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. We learned something. I, this knowledge is power. It is. It really is. So even for my first bands, I'm screaming. So I've it's always it's always been there, you know. Um, and I just fucking love it. It's fucking sick. It's fun. Mm. And it's different, you know, and the, you know, I, I want, I've always felt like with music, I want to, uh, earn, earn it, you know, as, as a, as a punk rock lover. Um, I never wanted to use my fame to elevate it. I wanted to fucking sleep in a van. I wanted to tour across the country, almost getting car wrecks. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I feel like I needed to earn and same. And so with, with the screamo, it's something that I feel like, um, I, I want people to respect this element of me i'm not just a kid fucking who's who who's trying his hand in pop punk it's something that's been with me since i was young respect because a lot like you could have easily gotten the bus you could have done all that shit but you right, really right. chose to do this from the right from the very beginning which yeah. earns respect you know and also oh, builds integrity yeah. and yeah yeah oh yeah absolutely 
Yeah, but I'm ready for a bus now. Fuck yeah. Like I, I deserve. I, I, I love I love doing the van tours and and I stepped up and got an R V for wow. from Cruise America and that was fucking fun and the whole thing flooded and we like pulled over on the side of where were we? Fucking Wyoming or some shit and th- we were like dodging deer and the whole thing was flooding. We like broke a pipe in it and it was awesome. Absolutely my nightmare, but you need those moments because it, it builds so character. Fun. Yeah, and we like yelled at each other for a second and like my tour manager was like, dude, take off your shoes, like there's something because the COVID was happening. He's like, COVID sticks to your shoes. And I was like, fuck off. That's not the point right here. We're trying to save this fucking RV. <laughs> so it got heated. It was, it's so fun. You got to earn those moments. I think at least. No, you really do. I, I, honestly, I, I've heard for many, many years that like true artists are built by people who throw beers at them. And uh, yeah, if you just fucking walk in and you're, you know, in the fucking sickest seat or on the coolest bus, nah. you've got nothing. And that's really not lasting. And it's going to be fleeting. I think so. Maybe. Well, I mean, history it will tell you that, I believe. Yeah. You really could look back. There's like a, a staggering amount of examples. Like, e- you know, and everybody has their own version of beers thrown at them. Right. You know, for Ariana Grande, it's playing at gay bars at, you know, 2 a.m. And there's nobody there. And she's like fucking, you know, 14. Uh, That's but, badass. And then I watch. Yeah, dude. I've Jack's literally got. There's so many. Everybody has their own version. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Of course. And yeah, uh, yeah. fuck. Like, you need the van. You need the flood. You yeah. need the Dodge Deer. Yeah. Like so it's just fun. a part of the process. It's fun. I love it. I miss that. I miss that a lot. And I but really you're do a tour. I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've dedicated a lot of time to music in the last five years. And so now that team wolf is, is popular again, I'm, I really want to focus on this at the acting world. Um, but it's cool because I already have the music written. I'm ready to release, you know. So I'm like, yeah. going to focus on acting for a while, release at the same exact time, release music, and then you know come back, do a tour. So it's like I'm really trying to mesh the two and strategically do both at the same time. Daddy Tyler is cooking. That's right, baby. <laughs> you gotta listen to Tyler Posey's music. Link in the description below. It's all on Amazon Music. Plus, we'll put a link to like a you know. His website or whatever. So, like, when tour tickets Do I come, have a website? I'm sure you have something now. <laughs> you know, I don't run nothing. it. If it is, if I have one, I don't run it. TylerPosey.org. Tyler Tyler no. Nope. Link tree. I have a link tree. You know what? You may want to go I buy have it. a link tree. I have a link tree. <laughs> I have a link tree. Yeah. I'll throw, I'll throw a link up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll put something in there so you can get in touch. Um, but really, <laughs> listen to all of his music. Uh, Amazon Music has all of it. What are you thinking? Um, when you were talking about writing and stuff, were you happy with the script for Teen Wolf when you first got it? Or like, were you expecting anything for the movie? I really wasn't expecting. I didn't, I, yeah, I tried to leave all expectations out. Um, I definitely was happy with it, but I only got a, I think I got the first 12 pages and I was like, this is sick, dude. Fuck yeah. It feels like Teen Wolf. It's paying enough homages while growing these characters. Uh, it felt really good. And I was really excited to kind of see where it went. And, <clears throat> but there were still moments where I was like, man, I wish that we could try this. I wish we could go this direction. Mm-hmm. There's, that's always going to happen. That's like, that's just how I am, you know, as an actor. I want to, I want, I want to have more of a say and be like, I think it should go this way. So, there were definitely some things where I feel like we could have tackled that we didn't, but hopefully, you know, if there's more, we could do it on the next ones, you know? Well, yeah, so. why'd you guys do a movie instead of a show? I feel like you could tackle more with a show with multiple episodes. I don't know the answer to that. Really? No, I, um, Paramount Plus, uh, hmm, I really don't know. I could speculate, but Jeff Davis, who created Teen yeah. Wolf, he's also got the show called Wolfpack on, mm-hmm. on Paramount Plus. Maybe he didn't want to do two shows at the same time. Makes sense. Um... I was down for movies. I think that's kind of dope, you know. Maybe they they want maybe they want to do. A, I I honestly think it's the right way to gr- garner hype, and I think they probably, if I was them, would look at data for like an iCarly reboot or whatever, and mm. see the episode to episode uh, carryover. How many people are new iCarly fans? Right. How many people are old iCarly fans? There's something to like a movie the same way with like a limited drop of something that you feel like you have to tune in to be there for it. Uh-huh. And sure, right. I think there's something to a TV <clears throat> show having the ability to jump the shark. Even mm. within a first season, that could really turn people off. Right. I don't know. Also, I feel like uh, it takes a lot more to put a TV show together, a yeah. full season or more, rather than a movie. So maybe they were like, let's see how this movie goes. Well, you know, obviously we're going to put money into it and make it beautiful and the best that it could be. But, you know, it takes less time to do a movie rather than a full mm. ser- season of a TV show. So maybe they were like, let's see how this goes. Maybe we'll do next movie. Maybe we'll do a fucking TV show, bring it back into a show. What, in whichever aspect I'm down to, to come back. So I mean, I do, uh, let's see. I think they're going to bring you all back again. Fuck, I hope so. Well, I think, what's Fingers Jeff, and toes. Jeff Dave, Davis, that's his name, right? Yes. He did have a quote saying like, uh, he said, 
I know there's going to be some fans disappointed with what happened to this character, what happened to that character, but I would say that's for the next movie. Love that. Love so, that. Sounds like it's not going anywhere. He hasn't told me that. Well, he told someone that. Um, <laughs> I would love that. I'm ready for it. Really, I really want. Is it, really does want. it bother you? I was like looking up stuff about you before you came in. Every single headline is Tyler Posey talks to Dylan O'Brien. Tyler Posey talks to Dylan O'Brien. Is it something you get sick of? No, definitely not. Absolutely Dylan not. Was? No, 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 hundred no, percent. I I love him. Um, obviously, it's his own. You know, I'm never going to speak for him. Um, but he's a huge part of the show in my life, and it makes sense. You know, yeah. it's like I, you know, I equate it to when Blink broke up, and people were asking Mark, "Where's Tom?" And Tom came back, and Tom came back. Well, it took like ten years. It took maybe longer. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's 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 something that you know I think might 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 be annoying if I didn't love him and respect him and um and I understand I understand he's a huge part of the show you know mm-hmm. but I am the fucking show yeah <laughs> <laughs> but there is something to the franchise com- totally having the ability to carry on with or without no Shh, what do you mean I mean he's not in the movie right no, no. so th- obviously it's doing just fine it is yeah no yeah fat, like yeah. that's, you know, like that's, that's okay something, that's something that I was you know really looking forward to is showing the fans like you know, obviously we love him so much and you don't love him more than I do, but I want to be respected as being able to carry this shit alone. Fuck Not yeah. alone. There's a huge cast and they're all so good, but this is now my, 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 my thing. And, and I, and I've, I've earned that. Yeah. And I hate to be that guy, but the show does always go on. It does. Yeah, Absolutely. I love how passionate you are about this character still, because there's a lot of people in your position who want like nothing to right. do. Oh, I have a thousand friends that yeah. wouldn't fucking touch an old character of theirs if you paid them literally a million dollars to do it for the right. fucking yeah. for an hour. And I don't understand that. I mean, I, I I get it. I get having you know your moment as the as that as that side of you. You want to move on, but like it's just acting. And, yes. it's, and it's fun to fucking revisit it, especially for me and for the for the fans. You know, mm-hmm. it's like everyone grew up. All these kids grew up. Like I see fans that come to me and they look like they're my age. And like I was watching you when I was twelve years old. And I was like, how fucking old are you? <laughs> um, so they've all grown up, and I want to. I want to. I want to be like, yo, check this character out now. Like it's just a fun. It's a fun cool. thing. It's yeah. cool. It's you get to grow up with him. You get to grow him, and that's to me was always the um, challenging part of Teen Wolf. Was each season, I was like, how do I change this guy? You know, how do what using everything that he's been through, like, how do I adjust him slightly, you know? And so I got to do that for 15, 15 years. You know, he's older. He's 15 years older. So. Was it hard getting back into character? I thought it was going to be. But it wasn't. Actually, I didn't know if it was going to be or not, but I had that fear. I was like, fuck, dude, do I have the chops? Am I, do I still know how to do this guy? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I killed it. <laughs> and did you, from the very, uh, from the very first second, you just fell right back into I it. Fell right back into it. Sick. It was a little scary, you know. But like the first scene I did was like getting my ass kicked, and so I was like, okay, this feels like Teen Wolf. Yeah. You know, it was. It felt very. It was like the perfect thing to jump back into it. And yeah, I was a little. I was a little nervous. I was like, do I do I know how to play this guy again? And it hit me immediately, and it felt even better. I felt like I was. I don't know if it was because I was sober this time. And that's I, right. We talked know. about how much weed you smoked on set last. Oh my time. god. Yeah, big you pothead. That? yeah, you had to get through it. Of course I remember it. Big pothead. Um, and that's all it was. I was never drunk. I was never on anything else. I was just stoned. And Is that what you've been sober from for two years? Everything. I was sober. I'm sober from everything. I got every Things got a little heavier. Um, you know, I, I was always a pothead, and anything I introduced, any substance I introduced to myself, I used as, like, weed. Morning, day, and night. Um, I get that. Yeah, so... But is that from thinking that everything is equal to weed so you can manage it and still stay in control or what? No, definitely not. Maybe. I think at first. Yeah, because weed, like, trust me, I, you know, I smoke a lot of weed. Uh-huh. I'm in control, you know? Right. But what I do know is that if I was to consume anything the same way I consume weed, I'd be fucked. I yeah. mean, I would, I would, I, I could not exist. I didn't have that. And, and, and I was okay for a little while. I would like, I would like, you know. I would, I would, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was kind of a functioning addict for a little bit, um, and so then I realized that, like, uh oh, this is really fucking me up. Like two years into it, and then I couldn't stop. Did you see cannabis as your entry uh, entryway in? No, 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 definitely not. I don't think it was that. I just think that, like, I just got so used to the way I used cannabis. I get it. That I was just that whatever I introduced, I was like, it's all a party. I could do it whenever I want, however much I want. And but isn't it weird that like you wouldn't necessarily party when you smoked weed? You no. actually fucking work. Even when I did drugs, I I didn't party. I was always alone. It got it got pretty gnarly. Got pretty sad. I I I consume most of my cannabis alone. I very much understand. Yeah, that, you know, I it's do better. Well, it's, 
Okay, that's not, well, that's not true. Maybe not. We're learning from this conversation <laughs> that it's good to be alone with our own thoughts and to, uh, to tackle them head on because running from them is not. Definitely not. It's no. not it. No. And I got to take my own advice. By not running from your thoughts? Fuck yeah. Yeah, you can't. No, I tried to like mask them. Yeah. 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 Muffle yeah. them. That's, that's what I did with everything. Weed uh, did that. I didn't know I was doing that. Weed came to me because I felt... Uh, Sort of, uh, uh, I didn't feel like I fit in when I was a kid because I was an actor at such a young age. I think we've talked about this probably. <laughs> I was an actor, and then I was also I lived in the small town, so I was like, "Where the fuck do I fit?" And then I found weed with my my friends, and uh, it helped me feel normal. Definitely, it's, I weirdly relate to that in a very weird way. I didn't have many friends, and then I found fucking weed, and not only did it help me shut my mind off that was forever racing and moving and going and mm -hmm. had no sign of stopping, it also, like, added this social element to my life that I didn't necessarily have before. And sure, yeah. It, you know, it came into my life with my friends at the time. Very interesting. I never really have thought that deep into it. Yeah. Uh, in terms of history, right? Like, in terms of uh, time spent using cannabis. Mm -hmm. More of, like, Today habits, I, I tried to analyze. Um, right. But that's good. It's a social, but that's so, yeah, the want to fit in, the want to at least have a friend. Yeah. And it also, it. it felt like it gave me an edge. Yeah. You know, I, I always, totally get it. I was like embarrassed from being an actor. I was like, this feels lame. Like, I don't like this career. For so long, I felt that way. When did um, that change? When I was 17. So I really, I was, I, I was like, uh, um, but yeah, I felt like it gave me a little bit of an edge. I was like, I'm fucking hardcore. I'm badass. I'm smoking weed in class. You know, it was, uh, I felt cool. Um, and then I went to high school. I loved hanging out in high school. I loved experimenting with drugs and getting drunk and um, getting thrown out and shit and hanging with my, my skateboard buddies who I'm still best friends with today. And um, and then at like 17, I was like, what am I doing, dude? I have a fucking cool career. Mm -hmm. I got it out of my system. I, I, I felt like I was ready to come back. And so a year later, I booked Team Wolf. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. You get paid well for the movie? I Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, they tried to lowball me. Seven <laughs> figures? <laughs> no. And you're like, Dylan's not coming back. No, you better pay me. I said that. Really? I literally said that. <laughs> yeah, you should. We got to fix that. <laughs> and they're like, uh, sorry, we've already used the money. I was like, what? That was yesterday. <laughs> How the fuck? <laughs> we relocated that budget real quick. Yeah. No, but for the next ones, if there are. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm coming back. You really are a fucking gift. Thanks, bud. Um, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Tyler it's, Posey's it's music. Fun. Listen to it. Link in the description below. I'm excited for the album. I'm excited I'm for you. I'm looking forward, or to for it. you to hear it. I'm, <laughs> but like, I'm, like, I'm <laughs> unraveled is the album, and there's going to be a link to like where that lives on Amazon Music below too. I'm excited for you. I mean, like, I'm excited for you to hear it, yeah, yeah, not yeah, like yeah. cocky, because it's dope. I'm excited. Do you want to hear a sneak? Yeah. I'm oh, just going yeah, to play the first, yeah. the first, the first little. When you were talking about screamo and whatever, I was like, you know, what? I should play this the first song. Just a second, just a smidge of it. Let me see, I got it right here. Okay, this isn't the master, this is whatever, but... Uh, uh, where do I start it? I'm not going to start it right at the beginning. Okay, here it is. Just for, this is for you. Okay. Kind of hear it. Oh, Congrats. so fucking good! Cool, right? Sweating. So, so that, so that's that's what starts the album. Holy shit! That's the first song. That's the first song. Yeah. What's, did, we, did you give us the title for that one? That yet? one's called "Get Out Alive." Okay. It's fun. There's a lyric that goes, uh, uh, something about like, uh, I hate everything here, so I'm gonna take my dogs and my chick up to space. You could fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fun, dude. It's such a fun little song. Uh, but yeah, that's what starts it. It's a good one. So Are those good. thoughts that just live in your head that you uh, just feel inclined to share? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I don't agree with the way things that happen. And I'm like, this, this, there's not enough spirituality in people's choices. There's too much ego. You know what I mean? With, with a lot of the world. And so I just want to go to space. I just want to find a little planet, mm -hmm. hang out there with my dogs and my chick. That's not too much to ask. It might be. I don't know. TBD. TBD, yeah.
Anyway, listen to Tyler Posey's music. <laughs> it's all on Amazon Music. That's right, Amazon Music. The same guy who could eventually get you to space. True. Shout out Jeff. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's up there. He's doing shit. He's up there right now, huh? I probably. He yeah. was in his office later. <laughs> Do you, to, you, got, you got a standing meeting with Jeff? Yeah, I got a meeting later with Jeff. Upstairs? Yeah, I'll see if he's up there later. Oh, yeah, okay. 42nd floor. <laughs> this floor is there's, all, there's only three floors yeah, in the three. building. <laughs> Tyler Posey, appreciate you. Great seeing you guys. No, thanks it, for yeah. putting up with my shit today. Easy. No, I really owe you. Have I, you seen the Nespresso machine in there? Yeah, it's a good one, right? I MTV gave us our first Nespresso. It was this little red robot. That's a good gift. Nickelodeon used to give shitty gifts. This one was a good one. Fuck. But that oh, Nespresso yes. machine is yeah. wild. I hear it's... In, I, I mean, I've seen it a bunch. I don't drink coffee, but I hear it's absolutely incredible. I had a good time. I, I made a coffee, drank some of it, threw it out, made another coffee, Amazing. threw it out. <laughs> didn't it. even drink that one. Just joking. I <laughs> no, you should do that. We have more than enough to go around, and it's free here. So It was but. sick. So I had a good time. Damn, they, get, they, they got you an espresso machine. They did. A little tiny red one. One of the big gifts that Nickelodeon got us one year was a Google Chrome. It was a $25 That's dope. Google version of Apple TV. That's great. Man, I guess the gift. Be happy with it. No, it wasn't, one. dude. And then, fuck, I, can I, have, I have so many shitty gifts I collect us <laughs> in my basement from them. Tar Posey, everybody. <laughs>